talking to CP101 and I'm getting ready to change my FEP film in my printer. I thought I would just show how it's done, at least with the Voxel Lab, the Proxima. Obviously, if you don't have a Proxima, this isn't going to do you much good, but if you have one of these, I'll kind of show you how you can change yours out. It's not as hard. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, what you have here is a three-piece vat. This is the vat you pour your resin in that goes on top of the printer, actually it goes like this. It goes on top of your printer. And then underneath here, we have this framework, and it's a two-piece framework. So in between this framework is where the, the film is sandwiched. And then once it's sandwiched between these two, it goes into the bottom of your vat like this. And then you have your complete setup. It's really uh, easy peasy. It's not hard at all. Uh, it's a real simple setup here. And you want to wear gloves because you want to make sure that when you take this uh, framework apart, if there's any raw resin inside here, you don't want to get any on your skin. Because for me anyway, if I get, I found out if uh, I get raw resin on my skin, it uh, turns it red almost as if it's uh, burning my skin. So. Uh, you want to make sure you're wearing gloves when you change out your film just to make sure you always want to have a little bit of alcohol handy I know this says Dawn Power Wash but actually inside here is all alcohol to uh, if you want to, to, to uh, clean your frame after uh, you take it all apart uh, I'm doing this on top of a dog pad uh, because of you know if there's any resin or anything like that uh, I can just uh, throw the pad away I, it's not a big deal uh, but uh, we have it all taken apart and uh, I'll show you when I put it back together uh, uh, you have uh, screws on each side of this that's why you have so many holes and you know which way it goes because uh, the holes are fluted where the screws go so uh, you know which way it goes together so uh, actually I have this should go like this where the fluter holes are on each side. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is, is just, I took the old film out. Now this is the second time I've changed my film because I, I don't know what the hell I did. I did something in this film. I don't know how it got on there, but it's a big scuff mark on it. And while it hasn't interfered with my prints any, I just don't like the idea of having that big scuff mark on it. I don't know, kind of OCD about that, I guess. I'll show you the scuff mark. You can kind of see it right there. See that scuff mark right here? I don't know how I got that on there. But I can't get it off. I thought maybe it was just stuck resin or something, but uh, it's not. It's, uh, I don't know how I got that scuff on there. So anyway, when I bought my uh, printer, I bought a 10-pack of film. And I thought I was buying replacement film for this printer. So I thought, well, okay, you know, I'll go ahead and get that. That way it kind of a... Uh, drop in kind of replacement and when I opened this up to to put my uh, FEP in the first time uh, the sheets were huge so I don't know whether I screwed up when I ordered it or Voxelab sent me the wrong ones but uh, they're not for this printer so I thought well I'm going to use them anyway like a universal sheet so and that's what this is and um, you know it worked just fine I mean you know I didn't have any issues with it uh, but uh, I was hoping just to have a drop-in kind of replacement set up but so now we have to do a little bit more work because we have to put our holes in and it's not that big of a deal you can see I put holes in this one and use to put the holes in there I used my uh, Weller soldering iron I know some guys just use an exacto blade and poke holes and then put the screw in but I really don't like doing that because I'm afraid I'm gonna rip the film and by using your soldering iron, you get a nice, clean, round hole that's not going to rip on you. So that's why I use the Weller. Uh, so we got our screws in here. These are the larger screws, which bolt the framework to the vat. These smaller ones are what uh, bolt the framework together and sandwich your film in between there. And then as far as tightness of your film, because you want your film taut, you don't want it loose. Uh, this edge right here when you go to put your framework in is what actually tightens everything down and gets your FEP film kind of sound like a drum skin 
Now I know some guys use an app and actually measure the decibels, I guess, it puts out. Uh, I didn't do that. I figured that's kind of an overkill because this piece right here, the way this is designed, uh, it, it'll put that tautness in there for you. Uh, you just want to leave this just a tad loose uh, when you go to put it in the framework. And then when you put it in the vat, as I said, it'll tighten right up. And, uh, you know, I didn't have any issues when I put this in as far as printing. In fact, I printed up Mary Jane. She came out just fine. Uh, I didn't have any issues with hers. So uh, I think, I mean, if, if you want to use a, a, a DB app, a sound app thing to, I guess, measure your film, uh, be my guest. I think it's overkill. I don't think you don't need to do it. Uh, and this right here is proof that you don't need to do it or this would, uh, uh, this would have came out like crap. So, uh, I, as I said, I don't do it. I just uh, make sure this is taut because obviously you don't want this loose. Because when it's in the vat and your build table is going up and down, you have your resin in here. And this build table is going up and down. It's creating an awful lot of vacuum. And if this is loose then this film is going to raise up and down with the table and it's just going to screw your print up. So it has to be taut. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean the frame up a little bit more because I still see a couple pieces of uh, resin here around where the screws go. I'm going to clean it a little bit more. Alright, so here's our new film and you can see how it's <laughs> huge compared to mine. I don't know what this is for. Definitely not for my printer. Uh, so we're not going to be able to just drop it in there. Uh, it has a uh, plastic on each side of it to protect the film. And um, we are uh, going to have to lay this down. And make sure this is flat. There's nothing in the way here. Oh, I got a little bit of crap here. I want to get off. Okay, I think that's uh, just the way we want to go. Yeah, okay. So we take our take our film here. Yeah, uh, I need my stand for my iron because I'm going to end up burning something. I'm not careful. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to take and remove the film. I'm going to carefully put it down here where the framework. And then this is always hard with gloves. We're gonna have to peel the other side off. The one side is pretty easy to peel off. The other side is uh, really hard to get peeled off. At least for me, it is anyway. I'm use my exacto blade. Maybe that'll help. I don't care if I scratch the outside because I'm gonna be trimming this. Okay, so we're going to center this kind of sort of like this. I know you can't see it because it's clear. So we're going to center it. I'm going to take our framework. I'm going to lay it right over the top like so. And that's, that's roughly, you know, let me move it over a little bit. It's roughly centered. It's not perfect, but you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, really. It's kind of hard to see on this white. That's good enough, I think. Okay. So there we go. Uh, it's just sitting loose in here. And uh, that's how I did it last time, and it being loose didn't cause me any issues. Uh, it was perfect when I went to lay down the 
framework into that. So now we're going to take our weller. We're going to start right here. I'm going to poke a hole right in the plastic with it. And then I'm going to put our screw in. Start putting the framework back together. Okay, so we've got the framework back together again, and sorry, I'll lift this up. You can see how we got the film kind of maybe you can't kind of sandwiched in between there. Now, if you get as you can see, it looks like a little you know it's got some wrinkles in it, but don't let that uh, freak you out. Um, once we put it, this framework into the vat, I guarantee this is going to tighten right up and um, just be spiffy. So our next step is to flip this over because we got the fluted holes on this side and to put this in here just like so see that and then once we get all of our screws in and this is tight we'll go back with an exacto blade and trim all this excess plastic off of the uh, that and then uh, got dog hair that's one thing bad about having pets is dog hair because um, it's just like it's like a this is like a magnet to dog hair, uh, but uh, then we'll just uh, uh, trim it off. Now, as you can see, that edge I showed you earlier. How if I push down on this, you can see this uh, start to tighten up. Just doing this, so that edge is what really tightens your film down. So you just want to let gravity do its thing when you first put it down the framework and then this vat this vat will take care of the rest when you go to put screws in Oop, can't do that unless we put a hole first so now we'll take our um, weller we'll go around and we'll poke our holes got some nice clean holes in here Okay, so now we got the framework tightened down into the vat. We got all this excess plastic that we have to cut off. Real easy to do. You take a sharp exacto blade, come in here, and you just cut along the framework. Just go right around it. And just trim the uh, excess off. Corners sometimes can be a little tricky. All right, there we go. Here we go. Brand new film for our vat. And we're all ready to go. So uh, that's it for the proxima. That's how you that's how I do it. And it just works for me. And uh yeah. So our next uh thing I'm gonna be printing up is uh Spider-Man to match uh, Mary Jane. 
trying to get like a collection of superheroes and their better halves uh, uh, like a little display going and I want them all the same height roughly four four and a half inches um, so you know right now we got you've seen these guys already but we got Batman we still have to do Batgirl and now we have Mary Jane and now we'll need to do Spider-Man I want Superman and some of the other ones that I can find uh, maybe uh, Catwoman, uh, Poison Ivy, Joker, you know, uh, some of those guys. And, yeah, I think it'll be kind of a cool little shelf display there with all of our all of our uh, villains and villainesses and superheroes and all that stuff. All right, guys, I uh, hope this helps. Take care, and uh, we'll see you in our next video.